Hey y'all, today I want to talk about the Pilot Metropolitan and how it holds up over time. But first, check out my new intro. Okay, so this is my very first fountain pen ever. Well, that's not really true because I had some disposable ones back in high school, but this is the first one I got when I really started getting into the fountain pen hobby. And I got this almost six years ago, I think. So it's been a while. This pen has seen some miles. So what I wanna do is I wanna talk about how it's held up over those six years, and also what it's been like to use Pilot Metropolitans over the years and uh, what kind of quirks I've run into, and yeah, just how they hold up. So let's flip the camera and we'll get started. Okay, let's get started with talking about the metal material that these are made out of and the anodized colors that they put on them. So all in all, they do hold up pretty well, but just like any pen, they're gonna accumulate some wear and tear. So I wanna show that to you. And first I wanna explain um, something that's important to know about metal pens. I think there's a misconception that metal pens are automatically more durable than plastic pens, and that's really not the case. And the Pilot Metropolitan is a good example of that. And I'll get into more of that in a second. But first, let's look at um, just what do these pens look like after you've been using them for a while. So my silver one's the oldest. The gold, I believe, is my newest. I've had this one for quite a while as well. Uh, that was my second fountain pen, actually. This one's a funny story. Um, I wanted to get one for my dad for Christmas, and I did, but I had this hunch to test it, I guess, before I gave it to him, and it had a bad nib, and I looked at it under the under my loop, and it was kind of wonky. So Goulet Pens let me keep it, and they sent me a new one, and they were like, yeah, just practice your nib meistering skills or whatever and see if you can fix it up. So that's what I did. It writes okay, not as good as the other ones. But I'm not really going to show you this one because I haven't used it as much. So there's not as much wear and tear, but I'll show you these three. So let's start with the most recent one I've got. Um, and this bright gold also kind of helps to highlight some of the, the blemishes that happen. Let's, hear, let's start with the cap here. So you can see, I mean, it still looks pretty good, but you can see those dark specks right there. Those are little tiny scratches. Um, the clips hold up pretty well. They don't get super duper scratched. Maybe some little scratches, but nothing really that crazy. We got some more scratches on that side. Let's take a look up here. Looks pretty good. All right, let's look at the barrel. Okay. So all in all, I think it looks pretty good. Um, I think, let's see, yeah, there's some scratches down here at the end. Of course, most of this is avoidable. If you really pamper your pens, you probably won't have this issue. But this is an entry-level pen, and it's kind of a daily carry pen, so the average user is probably going to get this thing a little bit scratched up. Let's take a look at the black one really quick. It might be a little harder to see these scratches, but um, we'll give it a shot anyway. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but there's kind of a scratch along here. Um, so one reason that I think that, yeah, you can see some there. Um, one reason I think that metal pens aren't always necessarily as durable as you might think is that they often have these anodized coatings on them. And I don't really know the chemical process behind that, but it's some kind of paint or whatever that's sealed on there really good um and and so they look nice they feel nice but they are prone to having that coating on the outside get scratched so and you'll see that most obviously with this one it's super old you know um, and actually i got it used um, my wife got it for me on ebay she bought it used it came in pretty good condition but maybe just with a couple little spots okay you can see a little scratch up there let's see some scratches down there okay let's look at the barrel 
Okay, so you can see some there, some pretty big scratches or chips. Um, okay, now I want to talk about this guy, my little hitchhiker's thumb. <laughs> that was my fault. So I did that. Um, that was an accident. Um, but this goes along with why metal pens aren't necessarily going to be the strongest pens out there. So when I first had this pen, I was carrying it around a lot and I made the mistake of taking it to Walmart and like checking off my shopping list as I was pulling stuff out of aisles and stuff. So yeah, I don't recommend using a fountain pen when you're standing on a concrete floor because if you use fountain pens long enough, you're going to drop a fountain pen. It's just, it's just going to happen. And it happened to me at the worst time. And the cap fell off. Actually, that's what happened, I think. I don't think I dropped the pen. I think I dropped the cap. Um, the cap fell like this and dented. I think it's right there. I think you can kind of see just a little bit of flatness right there. It was really dented, though. Like, it was... It was terrible and I thought I had just killed my pen and I was so disappointed because I only had like a couple of pens at this point and I loved this pen I was like no so yeah that was disappointing but then I got this great idea that I could slip the barrel of the pen in there and kind of pry it back out bend it back out like a little lever and it worked great but this lip is just slightly sharp and it just shaved the paint right off. So not all metal pens will be like this. This is a, a pretty lightweight, uh, thin bodied metal pen and other metal pens are sometimes finished a little differently too. So, but it's good to remember that the material itself doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be durable, more durable or less durable. Um, it depends more on the quality of the metal or, or of the plastic rather than is it metal or is it plastic? So yeah, uh, if I dropped a, a nice resin or plastic pen, you're not gonna dent the cap. Um, it's probably just gonna bounce because it's gonna be light. You might get a little scratch if you drop it on concrete, but it's not gonna really cause serious damage. But dropping metal, at least this metal, is soft, and so it was pretty bad. Luckily, it still caps really well. Um, no complaints there. That was actually only one of two big mishaps. I actually dropped this pen nib down on hardwood and just completely obliterated the tip. But I was able to pry it back together and it's not as smooth as it was. Pilots are generally fairly smooth, especially for how fine they are. But yeah, it's not as smooth as it was and it writes a little wetter than it did. Usually these pens keep a pretty tight line, but this one likes to let the ink spread a little bit more. Still plenty usable though, but I think you can kind of see right at the tip there, kind of some warping in the metal. That's kind of the leftover scar of me dropping it. So these pens can get beaten up, but they can take a beating pretty well, honestly. So I think that covers it for the metal, the paint, all that kind of stuff. Let's talk about some of the plastic. So the grip section here, you'll notice, I think, yeah, You'll notice my grip section looks a little funny. Here, let me turn the light on, see if I can get a better, better lighting on that. Yeah, there we go. So you can see those smudges. Um, that is super glue. I have had a pretty chronic cracking issue with my Pilot Metropolitans. And the culprit is, let's see if I can get it to show up. It's hard to get black to show up, guys, but it's, it's this mold injection line that goes up both sides of the grip section. Those are weaker than the rest of the grip section. And I don't know if it was my fault or what, because it's happened, I think, with all three of the Metropolitans I use. Um, I've swapped out nibs quite a bit. I've taken nibs out to clean after using kind of a, a more stubborn ink or whatever. So maybe it's my fault that they cracked. Maybe I just was handling them too, like handling the nib too much. I don't know. I still don't think that you should have three. I think it was three. It might've been just two, but I don't think you should have most of your Pilot Metropolitans leaking on you. So I first noticed it 
because uh, I'd be writing for a while and then I would just see like this little oval of ink on my finger. And at first I just thought I was holding it too close to the nib and I was, but no, I, I would clean it up and the exact same thing would happen right, right over again. So, and I looked at it with a loop. It was really hard to see, but I could see a little uh, crack just along that, that mold line. And it doesn't mean that these are bad pens. As I was doing research about this, I was reading about sailors and maybe even Mont Blancs and just all kinds of fancy luxury pens that they're not necessarily going to crack all the time, but there's still a risk. There's always a risk of plastic or resin cracking. So I would still highly recommend this as a good knockaround pen or a good beginner pen, but I would be careful if you're taking the nibs out, just be, just be gentle with it. So you're not putting too much pressure to the left or right or up and down on, on this thing right here. So, um, I think that's about it. Um, I do want to mention though, when I first got the pen, I was worried about these plastic threads. Um, I was disappointed to see that those were plastic. I didn't know that that was really common. Um, I didn't know anything about fountain pens at the time. So plastic threads on metal threads. I was worried about that. I've read other people online express their worries about that. Um, and after I started using the pen and had taken the grip section off a few times, I could see that there was maybe some microscopic plastic particulates flaking off just from the wear of the metal threads on there. But that has not continued to be an issue. I think it just needed to be broken in a little bit and the threading has lasted very well. I haven't had any issues with that. So I just thought I'd point that out in case any of you were concerned about the, the plastic on metal threads. I still don't think it's ideal, but um, it works. Uh, another thing, this is not a big deal because you're not gonna be showing this part of your pen off, but um, this, this part uh, right here, it's so hard to see, I'm sure, because it's black but um, there's a lot of scuffing going on there. Not a big deal, because it's inside the pen or whatever, but um, that's just some wear, I guess. I was also concerned with the putting the converters in, because you know, you're just shoving these things in and pilot converters fit very tightly. It's not like a Lamy Safari that just kind of clicks in or some other pens I've used where you don't have to use a lot of force to get your converter in there, but um, depending on the converter, sometimes you have to use some force to get it in there and it's very friction fit in there, just plastic scraping on plastic, getting it in. It doesn't feel great. And I was worried that I would crack this or damage something inside here, but so far I haven't had that issue. So, and hopefully it won't be an issue moving forward. Okay. I think that about covers it for the wear and tear. Let me know if you have any questions or if I missed anything that you're curious about. And let's talk a little bit more about my experience with using these pens. Okay. So overall I've enjoyed using these pens. I haven't had tons of issues. They're reliable writers for the most part, but a couple of quirks I have run into occasionally. They're not chronic issues necessarily, but with my medium, I have, these are fines. This is a medium. For some reason, a few times I've had it happen where it feels like it's running out of ink and it just runs dry. But I'm like, I just filled this thing. What's going on? So I think maybe there were some air bubbles in there or something. It's happened to me a few times and I don't have that issue with other pens. So I don't know if that was user error or if it's a design flaw uh, or if I just shaken my ink too much and had some air bubbles in there. But it happened to me a few times with this pen and not with these. So my guess is that it's not, if there wasn't, if there was user error involved, it probably wasn't just user error. It's probably something with the pen as well, but it's nothing in a good little shake can't fix. I always got it writing again pretty quickly. Another thing is, as you might know, fountain pens are a little sensitive to elevation change. You know, you're, you'll hear a lot of talk about how to travel with pens and how to take them on airplanes and stuff. I haven't flown with any of my Pilot Metropolitans, um, but I have gone on road trips with them and a couple of times I've had ink spill into the caps and I think it was the elevation, the change in pressure that caused that. But that's not an issue I've had with other pens. I've flown with Twisby Ecos and Lamy Safaris and 
nothing's ever leaked on me. So I don't know, but it's happened to me just a couple of times. Um, so if you do travel with these, make sure you're careful, make sure you read some tips on how to take fountain pens on airplanes. And, or if you're just driving from a, a low part of the country to a higher part of the country or something, just make sure it's upright in your pocket or in your backpack and not flipped upside down or on its side or something. And you should be fine. The one last thing I'll mention, and this is completely subjective, feel, feel free to disagree with me on this. But one thing that hasn't really lasted for me about these pens is my interest in them. As I've grown my collection a little bit, I feel myself gravitating toward other entry level pens as opposed to these. I don't use these a whole lot anymore because I have pens I like better. These are good pens, they write well. They're comfortable. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I guess the design, even though it's it's got this elegant simplicity to it, I think that I enjoy the designs of other pens that I have a little bit more. So I'm curious to know what you think about that. Maybe it's because I know that this is such a starter pen and I'm like, well, I want something other than a starter pen, which is kind of hypocritical because all of my pens are technically starter pens. I don't really have any fancy pens. I don't have the budget for that. <laughs> I'm a writer. I just, I, I mean, I do collect pens, but I mostly get them because I like using them and the beginner ones write fine. But yeah, I have others that I tend to enjoy using a little bit more. I don't know why, but that's, that's it. So let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you next time.